Welcome back to theCUBE's continuous coverage of AWS reInvent 2021. I'm here with my co-host John Furrier, and we're running one of the largest, most significant technology events in the history of 2021. Two live sets here in Las Vegas, along with our two studios, and we are absolutely delighted, we're incredibly delighted to welcome a returning alumni it's not enough to just say that you're an alumni because you have been such a fixture of theCUBE for so many years. Annie Weinberger, and uh, Annie is Head of Product Marketing for Applications at AWS. Annie, welcome. Thank welcome you so much, it's great to, to be Cube. back. Yes. It's wonderful to have you back. Let's dive right into okay. it. Talk to us about Connect. What does that mean when I say Connect? Yes, well I think if we talk about Amazon Connect, we have to go back to the beginning of the origin story. So over 10 years ago, when Amazon Retail was looking for a solution to manage their customer service and their contact center, we went out and we looked at different solutions and nothing really met our needs. Nothing could kind of provide the scale that we needed at Amazon or could really be as flexible as we needed to ensure that we're, our customer obsession could come through in our customer service. So we built our own solution. And over the years, customers were coming to us and asking, you know, what do you use for your customer service technology? And so we launched Amazon Connect, our omni-channel cloud contact center solution, um, just over four years ago. And it is the one of the fastest growing services at AWS. We have tens of thousands of customers using it today, like Capital One, Intuit, Bank of Omaha, Mutual of Omaha, Best Western, you know, I can go on and on. Um, and they're using it to have over 10 million interactions with customers every day. So it's, you know, growing phenomenally and we just couldn't be more proud to help our customers with their customer service. So yeah, t talk about some of the components that go into that. What are the sort of puzzle pieces that make up AWS Connect? Because obviously connecting with a customer can take a whole bunch of different forms with email, text, voice, yeah. what's, what's included in that? So it's an omni-channel cloud contact center. It provides you know, any way you want to talk to your customers. There's traditional methods of voice. There's automated ways to connect. So IVRs or you know, interactive voice responses where you call with voice prompts. There's chat. You know, we have Lex bots that use the same technology that powers Alexa for natural language understanding. Um, and I think customers really like it for a few reasons. One is that unlike kind of other contact center solutions, you can set it up in minutes. You know, American Preparatory Academy had to set up a contact center and they did it in two days. And then it's very, very easy to customize and use. So another example is you know, when Priceline was going through COVID and they realized their call, call volume went up 300% overnight and everybody was just sitting in the queue waiting to talk to an agent. So in 20 minutes, we were able to go in and very easily with a drag and drop interface, customize that flow so that people who had a reservation in the next 72 hours were prioritized. So, very, very easy to use. What I, you just jumped the gun on me, I was going to ask this, because we, we've been reporting the Connect during the pandemic was a huge success. Yes. There was many, many examples where people were dislocated, uh, disrupted by the pandemic, and you guys had tons of traction, from government, public sector, to commercial, across the board. Adam Shalevsky told me uh, in person a couple weeks ago that it was on fire. Connect was on fire. So, again, a tailwind, one of those examples with the pandemic, but it highlights this idea of purpose-built, ready to go, Pre-built applications. Pre-built applications, this is a phenomenon. Moving though. up the stack for AWS, it's very exciting. I think, yeah, we had over 5,000 new contact centers stood up in March and April of 2020 alone. Wow. Give us some scale, just go back to the scale piece, because this is like, uh, like amazing. You're, th to stand up a call center, like hours, days, like this is like incredible. To give, give us some stats on some examples of how fast people were standing up Connect. Yeah, I mean, you could stand it up overnight. American Preparatory Academy, as I mentioned, did it in two days. Um, we had, you know, this county of Los Angeles stood theirs up, I think, in a day. Um, you, can, you can go in right now, you have no, don't need any technical expertise, even <laughs> though cube, you have some. The cube call center, we don't yeah. have any people calling. But <laughs> I mean, we had everyone from a Mexican restaurant needed to take to-go orders, because now it's COVID, and they don't have a call, they've been able to set that up, grab yeah. a phone number, and start taking takeout orders, all the way to like Capital One, you know, with 40,000 agents that need to move remote overnight. 
Um, and I think that it's because of that ease to set up, but also the scale yep. and the way that we charge. So, you know, it's AWS consumption-based pricing. You only pay for the interactions with customers. So the barrier to entry is really, really low. You don't have to migrate everything over, buy a bunch of new licenses. You can just stand it up and you're only charged for the interactions with customers. And then if you want to scale down, um, like into it, obviously tax season, they bring on a lot more agents to handle calls, but when those agents are ne needed for that busy time, you're not paying for those seats. It flex. Yeah, take, take me through, okay, so that's a win, I get that, it's a home run, it's great success. Now, the machine learning story is interesting too, because you have the purpose-built platform, there's some customizations that can happen on top of it. So it's not just, here's a general purpose piece of software, people are using some customizations. Yeah. Take us through the, the other things. Well, and the exciting thing is they're, they're not even real customizations. Because we're AWS, we can leverage the AI ML services and build pre-built, purpose-built features. So that it's embedded and you know, Amazon Connect has been cloud native and AI born since the very beginning. So we've taken a lot of the AI services and built them in so you don't need any knowledge, you don't have to know anything about AI ML, you can just go in and start leveraging it. And it has huge powerful effects for our customers. We um, launched three new features this year. One was Amazon Wisdom, that's part of Amazon Connect. And what that does is, you know, if you're an agent and you're on the phone and customers asking questions, Today what they have to do is go in and search across all these different knowledge repositories to find the answer or you yep. know, how do I issue a refund? You know, we're hearing about this feature that's broken on our product. We're listening behind the scenes to that call and then just automatically providing the knowledge articles as they're on the call, saying this is what you should do, giving them recommendations so we can help the customer much more quickly. Yeah. I love the moving up the stack. Again, I'm a huge fan of Connect. We've been highlighting in all of our stories. It's a phenomenon that's translating to other areas. Um, but I want to tie back in where it goes next because on the uh, keynotes, Adam Selesky's in today with Swami, the conversations about a horizontal data plane. And so as customers would say use Connect, I might want, if I'm a big customer, I want to integrate that into my data because it's voice data, it's call center, it's customer data, but I have other databases. So how do you guys look at that integration layer and snapping it together with say a time series database or maybe a CRM system or retail e-commerce? Because again, it's all data, mm -hmm. but it's connected call center, some may think silo, but it's not really siloed. So I'm a customer, how do I integrate call center? What's yeah. there, what's the? And it's, it's you know, we're, we have a very strong partner with Salesforce, they're actually a reseller of Connect. So we work with them very, very closely. We have out of the box integrations with Salesforce, with your other, you know, analytics databases, with Marketo, with other services that you need. Um, I think again, it's one of the benefits of being AWS, very extensible, very flexible, and really easy to bring in and share the data that we have with other systems. So it's not an issue then? No. Yeah, one of the, one of the conversation points that's come up is the, uh, this idea that uh, a large majority of IT spend is still on premises today. Yeah. In other words, the AWS total addressable market hasn't been tapped yet. Yeah. And, and you imagine going through the pandemic, someone using AWS Connect to create a virtual call center. Now, as we hopefully come out, and people, some return to the office, but now they have the tools to be able to stay at home and be more flexible. Those people, maybe they weren't into cloud that much before, but to John's point, now you start talking about connecting all of those other data sources. Well, where, have the, where do those data sources belong? They belong in AWS. So from your perspective, um, on the surface it looks like, well wait, you have these products, but really, those are gateways to everything else that AWS does. Is that a fair statement? I think that's fair, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The big thing I want to get into is, okay, we're, I mean, we don't have a lot of people calling for the queue, but I mean, we wouldn't use the call center, but there's audio involved. Are people more going back to the old school phones for support now with the pandemic? Because you mentioned that earlier about the price line, I having mean, I more think call. it's, you know, when we talk to our customers too, it's about letting, letting any customer contact you the way they want to. You know, we, yeah. you know, I was talking, Delta spoke with us yesterday in the, the business application leader's obsession and she said, you know, when someone has a flight issue, I'm sure you can attest to this, I do the same thing, they call. 
Yeah. You know, if your if your flight got canceled or it's looking like it's going to keep pushing, you know, you don't necessarily want to go, you know, use a chat bot or send an email or a text. But there's other use cases where you just want a quick answer. You know, if yeah. you contact, I haven't received my product yet. You know, it said it was shipped. It ain't, I get it. I don't necessarily want to talk to someone. But so it's just about making that available. So on the, you on can the do voice it for everyone. On the voice side, is it other apps are integrating voice? So what's the interface to call center? Is it, can I integrate like an app, voice integrate through the app, or is so it all phone? Because for the agents, there's an agent UI. Got it, okay. So they'll see kind of calls that they have in their queue coming up, they'll see the tasks that they have to you know, issue a refund, they'll see the kind of analytics that they have, the knowledge works. There's a supervisor view, so they could go see, you know, we with Contact Lens for Amazon Connect, we had a, a launch this you know, this week, every event um, around contact lens. It lets you see the trends and sentiment of what's going on the call. It gives them like those training moments. If people aren't using the standard sign off or the standard greeting on the call, it's a training moment and they can kind of see what's happening and get real time alerts. It two keywords of a customer saying something like cancel into the, the call, that can get a flag and they can go in and help the agent if necessary. Um, so, all kinds of metadata extraction going on in real time. Yeah. How cool. do you, how at AWS do you go through the process of determining what should be bespoke solutioneering versus something that can be productized? You know there are 475 different kinds of instances. However, you can come up with a packaged solution where people could pick features and get up and running really quickly. How does that decision making process? Well, I, I mean, it, it, you know, 90% at least of what we do build, it comes from what our customers ask for. So we, we don't, it's, the onus is not on us. We listen to our customers, they tell us what they want us to build. Contact Center Solutions are their line of business applications. They're purchased by business decision makers and they're used to doing more buying than building. So they wanted something more out of the box, more pre, like, pre-built, yeah. um, but we still, our AWS, we make it very, very extensible, very easy to customize, a lot like pull in other data sources. Um, but when we look at how we are going to move up the stack in other areas, we just continue to listen to our customers. What's the biggest thing you learned in the pandemic from the team? What's the learnings coming out of the pandemic as hybrid world is upon us? I mean, I think a few things with, you know, starting as you mentioned with the cloud, that the kind of idea of a contact center being a massive building, usually in the middle of America, where you know people go and they sit and they have conversations, that that was really turned on its head. And you can have very secure and accessible solutions through the cloud so that you can work from anywhere. So that was really fantastic to see. Awesome. What's going to be interesting to see moving forward how that paradigm shifts. Some centralized call centers, but a lot of disaggregated work that can be done. I Give mean, who knows the you know, gig economy could be in the contact center. Yeah, you absolutely, know? Yeah. absolutely. Maybe get some cube hosts. Give us the cube connect. Yeah. We get some cube part, hosts remote. Some part-time work, yeah. <laughs> we, need, we need to talk. I got to get my phone number in All that right. list. I'll Annie, hook you up. It's been fantastic to Thank have you Thank you guys back. so much, Thank really you. appreciate it. For John Furrier, this is Dave Nicholson telling you thank you for joining our continuous coverage of AWS reInvent 2021. Stick with theCUBE for the best in hybrid event coverage. <laughs>